Lord be with you. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through Christ our Lord, now and forever. Amen. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you, throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations, kings of peoples, shall come from her. All the ends of the earth shall turn to you, O Lord. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory, for he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. All the ends of the earth shall turn to you, O Lord. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall turn to you, O Lord. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord, he rules over the nations. All the ends of the earth shall turn to you, O Lord. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. 
my soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. All the ends of the earth shall turn to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, but turning looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The birds are singing. The skies are blue, the air is warming, the snow has passed, the flowers are coming up. There is a hope and promise in the air. Springtime, Lent, points towards resurrection. And at this time in the world and in the UK, our vaccines are working, lockdown will be lifted, restrictions will ease steadily, stage by stage, normal life will return. And for us in the life of the church, we will come back to meeting together in our churches there is a few lines from our psalm this morning, our set psalm, that read like a prophetic comment on this particular time as we think about joining together again in our church, certainly by Easter, which will be poetic. The psalm reads, My praise is of him in the great assembly. Soon we will be praising together, not just in front of a computer screen or listening to the radio or watching the television, but with one another in a physical gathering in church, the great assembly. I will perform my vows, I as a priest and we, together as a congregation, will recite our familiar words of liturgy together in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Perhaps we can take that as a symbolic reference to sharing once again together that special service of Holy Communion, the bread and the wine. Those who seek the Lord shall praise him and shall praise him together and in the fullness of time 
once again we will do that thing which is special in the Christian tradition. We will sing together our joyful hymns of praise that come from the heart and inspire us and make us feel good and together and bonded in our fellowship and peaceful in our hearts. We are joyful and thankful and grateful that the time of pandemic will soon be over. But at the same time, we must not lose sight of sobering lessons and profound issues to be addressed and learned. A new way of looking at life, a new appreciation of life's value, perhaps in a similar way that after two world wars in the 20th century, there was a greater than ever emphasis on what we call the peace movement and a striving to find friendship and common ground with one another across international and cultural boundaries. And we must look more than ever at the big issues of the planets that we all share in common, our global community, our global village. We are one humanity and we have to strive earnestly to care in a more earnest and effective way for the planet at large. The planet, and this is a bigger issue than any pandemic, the planet is being destroyed by environmental destruction and the fact that there are so many billions of human beings on the planet the graph of humanity is going up and the graph of every other species is going down, including extinctions. And as voices like those of David Attenborough are saying again and again more than ever, we need to do something serious about it. We need to address the big issues. We need to learn what life and the universe, and we might say God, wants to teach us through the experience of these last 12 months or so, the experience of pandemic, focusing on the big issues, the global issues, the issues that we all share in common. Humanity has grown too large and needs to take seriously the effect it's having on planet Earth. Planet Earth will not survive if we go on as we are. These are moral issues, these are physical issues, and we might say they are also spiritual issues, and it's part of the Christian tradition to learn lessons through life, to hear what our God, or we might say life, or we might say the universe, is trying to teach us. So let us go forward rejoicing and celebrating the new life that comes post-pandemic. But let us go forward with the resolve to be aware of these global issues and to live better as a family of humanity. Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each of us and our loved ones near and far and the whole family of humanity now at this time and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.